Today, lesson 4B, elimination method, day number one. So far, with systems of equations, we've uh, talked about how to solve a system uh, by graphing. Then we spent a couple of days on a method called the substitution method. And today, we learn the first day of a method that most of you will probably prefer more than the other two methods. And as we make it through this idea of systems of equations, for some problems, I will uh, make you solve by specific methods. But for other problems, I will tell you to use any method that you like. And I have a feeling, once again, uh, that most of you will prefer the elimination method after we make it through tomorrow. So today, solve a system of two equations by the elimination method. All right. So we've talked about this idea of a graphing method, as I mentioned uh, a, a minute ago, which when we graph, we're trying to figure out where they intersect each other, and that ends up being the solution. Uh, that works OK. It's a little time consuming, but um, if the lines intersect at something other than integer points, then we can't really tell exactly where they're crossing each other. The substitution method works well. Uh, but it can get a little tedious depending on how difficult uh, both equations look. And, and today, the elimination method. So here is our very first problem. And the idea with the elimination method is to get one of the variables to cancel out by adding straight down. That's where this idea or the word elimination comes from. You're trying to eliminate a variable. And sometimes this method is also referred to as the addition method because we're trying to eliminate something by adding straight down. So if we take a look at both of those equations, and I'm just rewriting it here to get it out of the, out of the brace there. Uh, but if we add straight down, which variable is eliminated? Y. y. So let's do that. Let's just add straight down. The y's are eliminated. And look at what we end up with here, a very simple equation in the form 5x equals 10. And if we finish solving that equation, uh, we end up with x equals 2. And then from that point, it's just like the substitution method. So we're going to plug that back in or substitute that back in. And it doesn't matter whether you substitute it back into the first equation or the second equation. Uh, I'm going to substitute it back into the first equation. Why? Because I want to. It doesn't matter, though. I could use the second one. So when I substitute that back in, 4x and solve, I get y equal 2. So uh, the solution to that system is 2 comma 2. Remember, that's the only solution. If I were to graph both of those equations, they would intersect at 2 comma 2. So the elimination method. And we should always mentally check to make sure that our solution works. This is pretty easy for today. Uh, I want everybody to try number one. All right, so <coughs> I'm rewriting my problem. Without doing any work, the x's are eliminated by adding straight down. That gives me 4y equals 8. Very simple one-step equation to solve. And then take the y equals 2. And once again, I'm going to substitute that back into the first equation. I could use the second equation. We would end up with the same thing, 4x, and x is negative 1. So the solution is negative 1 comma 2. And once again, you should mentally check. Um, so what's different about problem number two here? The variables, the variables aren't lined up. Isn't there, a, isn't there a way of or a certain form that both of the equations were in in number one? What were both the equations in number one? What form were they in? Yeah. John. Uh, they were in standard form. They were in standard form. Right now, one's in slope-intercept form and one's in standard form. So if you left it like this, this is a typical problem where we would use substitution. But I'm telling you to solve by elimination. So if we want to solve by elimination, we really should make sure that both equations are in standard form. So I'm going to take the first equation and change it. <coughs> and all I've done so far is just I've rewritten the problem. Uh, I'm going to change it to standard form by subtracting 3x from both sides. We don't have any decimals or fractions, so now they are both in standard form. And the second one I just left alone, and I'll let you take it from there. Really quickly here. Uh, so now everything's lined up for us by putting them both in standard form so we can add straight down. 
and the y's are eliminated, and we end up with negative x equals 9. We can either multiply or divide both sides by negative 1. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. We end up with x equals negative 9. Substitute that back in. I'm going to substitute it back into the original first equation because that's the easiest place to do that. And we end up with y equals negative 23. So the solution is negative 9 comma negative 23, and you should mentally quickly make sure that it makes a true statement in both. Let's now take a look at number 3. What's different about number 3 compared to everything else that we have looked at so far? It should be obvious. Um, the one of the variables don't cancel each other out. Yeah, neither the x or the y. Neither one of them will cancel out right now. So here's what happens if you try and add straight down. Watch. You end up with 3x minus y equals 5. That doesn't help you with anything. So what are we going to do? Well, finally, we have to do something. And the rules are the same as they've been for any type of equation. You can multiply either one of those equations by anything that you want as long as you multiply everything in that equation by the same thing. That's using the multiplication property of equality. So um, you could also multiply the top equation by one thing and the bottom equation by something totally different. But the idea is we have to somehow get a variable to be eliminated. What's the easiest thing that we could do there? Yeah? Multiply the second equation on everything by 2. Okay, so hold on a second. I'm glad that you said that. So look, if I multiply the second equation by 2, that gives, makes this 2x, this negative 8y, and that 18. Tell me what's eliminated right now. Um, 2x. All right, let me add straight down. 4x, that's 4x, that's negative 5y, and that's 14. You're almost there, but right now nothing is eliminated if I multiply that bottom one by 2. Aaron? Yeah, if I multiply it by negative 2, do you see that now? If I multiply the bottom one by negative 2, then the x's will be eliminated. So we have to make sure that we pay attention to signs there. So the top equation, I just let, I'm leaving it alone because I don't need to multiply it by anything. And I multiplied the bottom one by negative 2. And let me tell you the most common mistake here is to not make sure that I distribute it all the way across. In other words, to not make sure that I multiply everything by negative 2. And when I do that on the bottom equation, now look at it. It becomes negative 2x plus 8y equals negative 18. I have multiplied that bottom equation by negative 2 all the way through there. All right, I'm going to let you finish it from there. Now, there was a question uh, uh, that, that, was, that went something like this. Instead of multiplying the bottom one by 2, could I multiply the top one by 4 and the bottom one by 3? Yeah, you could do that. There are lots of things you could do. But what you really want to try and do is always try and find the easiest thing. But there are lots of things that you could do. Please tell us the solution that you got for number three. The solution is one comma negative two. One comma negative two. All right, let's see if that is correct. I'm going to add straight down. The x's are eliminated. I now have 11y equals negative 22. Divide both sides by 11. We can see that I have y equals negative 2. Now substitute that into either of the two original equations. This time I'm going to use the second one. And I'm, I'm choosing to use the second one only because it looks like it might be the easiest one to deal with at this point. So that gives me x minus 4 times negative 2 equals 8, or equals 9, excuse me. Subtract 8 from both sides, and you can see that my solution is 1 comma negative 2. And once again, you should mentally check to make sure that that is accurate. All right, let's go to number 4. Everybody try number four. I am going to take the second equation and multiply it by five. To me, that's the easiest thing to do. Actually, yeah, maybe multiplying either equation by negative one might be easier than that even. But most of you did multiply by the second one by five. But if you multiply the top one by negative one, that might be easier than that. Or the bottom one by negative one, that might be easier as well. It does not matter. 
So doing what I did, I'm going to leave the first equation alone. The second one turns into this. When I add straight down, the y's are eliminated. I end up with 12x equals 45. Divide by 12 and make sure that I simplify. So x is 15 fourths. I now need to figure out where I'm going to substitute that. I'm going to substitute that into the second equation, though it does not matter where you substitute it. So now I have 2 times 15 fourths, which is 15 halves, by the way, or 7 and a half. And then I subtract that from both sides and then either multiply or divide both sides by negative 1. And I will end up with y equals 1 half. And a lot of you did get that. So the solution is 15 fourths or 3 and 3 fourths comma, one-half. All right, let's finish this off with number five. Everybody try number five. Two comma, negative four. Two comma negative four, and that's what I saw almost every single person gets. I'm going to rewrite the problem. All kinds of things you could do. For me, I think the easiest is to multiply the top one by negative seven. How many of you did that? All right, so I guess the question is, if you didn't do that, what did you do? Who did not do that? Okay, not everybody raised their hand when I asked you if you multiply the top one by negative 7. How many of you multiply the top one by negative 7? Let's try that again. Okay, all right. So, Lauren, you didn't. What did you do? I did it wrong. But what did you do? I'm not asking you what if solution. Instead of negative 7, I add 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ah, okay, so that was kind of what Hunter had done earlier, right? So we've got to make sure that we end up with opposites so that something will be eliminated there. So when I do that, the first equation turns into this. The second one stays the same. The y's are eliminated. When I add straight down, I end up with negative 11x equals negative 22. We can obviously see x is 2. Substitute that back into e either one of the uh, original equations. I don't know, what, where is this 6x plus 2y coming from? For some reason, I think maybe I multiplied that one by 2. Let's, uh, let's finish it off like this, because that certainly would be easier. So I'm going to substitute that in right here, and I end up with 6 plus y equals negative, or positive 2. So we can see that y is negative 4. So the solution is 2 comma negative 4. I'm just curious what the rest of that thing looks like. It's not going to be any different. I don't know why looks like that. But it doesn't matter. We still end up with 2 comma negative 4 for the solution. All right, we are finished for today.